Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to episode 6 of Divine Journey, where I am the proud owner of 36 plus 34, 70 blocks of cold coal, huzzah. So uh, all this will get turned into hop graphite, I'm not quite exactly sure how much it is, I guess it's just over an ingot. So this is like 75-ish ingots of uh, hop graphite dust when, once it's all processed out. Today, I would like to use that to make ourselves stuff like the uh, diesel generator, because this will provide healthy chunks of power, and the excavator, wherever that quest is, here. Because that will allow us to do automated mining, which will hopefully mean the end of, well, annual mining. So, um, yeah, let's start with the diesel generator, because I think we need power to... I think the excavator uses... Actually, how much does it use? It's in the configs here somewhere. What's that? I think it's a bit over a thousand R if a tick, if I had to guess. Let's see. Machines. Excavator. And something, yeah. So it's a thousand... Oh, it's been buffed significantly. Default is... 4,000. So, so 1,000 R if I take, that's not too bad, especially because our diesel generator will make 4,000. Um, and the odds of there being a mineral vein in a chunk has also been buffed significantly. So uh, each excavator will can only mine, you know, the mineral vein that we put it over, which means that um, each excavator can only, you know, it'll only get like the iron vein will probably have iron and uh, iron like things in it. So perhaps iron and nickel and some other stuff. Whereas um, if we want to get, say, copper, we need to put an excavator in a different spot. But my plan is to have a couple of excavators, probably. We probably won't have one per vein type because there's just there's probably 10 plus vein types. And there's no way I can afford to either power or make 10 excavators. However, we can uh, have a number of them so that we can not have to move them around all too often. So here's uh, turning our hop graphite into dust, or dusts into ingots. Uh, I remember it was a radiator here, right? Yeah. So 36 ingots just to make the nine radiator blocks for the diesel generator. Following the trend thus far, this diesel generator probably took about 10 stacks of iron. It used almost all my iron to make. So uh, yeah, no nothing in this pack is ever cheap. Additionally, it, let's see, it drinks diesel fuel it drinks it very quickly so we do have to be somewhat mindful because our diesel production right now is still manual right so manually filling the machine or the uh, squeezers and stuff um and it does not auto shut off when full so we're going to want to come up with a system to uh give it a redstone signal on the this port here to turn it on or off and for that what i'll probably do is take a hv capacitor which side does the power come out of up here i guess uh put it let's see i want the i can jump on this one on hurting me right put that there set the bottom side to input get up there somehow yeah neat feature if you shift right click it uh that's the opposite side and then i think this works we can get a comparator to measure the fullness of that energy cell and if it's above a threshold we can uh, turn it off at least i hope that works comparator and it looks like that works so the comparator measures the fullness of the capacitor we can set a threshold i have it set to 14 right now but we can modify it if needed and if it is uh greater than Put that the right way first of all if the signal becomes greater than 14 then it outputs so basically if the capacitor is just well in fact let's switch that to 13. this is a little bit of a larger buffer um but as you can see there it would shut off when uh the capacitor is greater than the side input here and that'll prevent us from wasting fuel i don't know exactly how much rf we get per bucket uh but if we just look at this thing while it's running it's uh yeah it drinks diesel fuel biodiesel fuel here very quickly it is not an efficient generator it's also a lot quieter than i expected honestly um last time i used this thing it was blowing my ears out from miles away but it's not exactly quiet it's just not super loud and there we go there's our automatic shutoff perfect so uh with that our diesel generator is done what does this go
something I care for. Okay, so next up, let's make our core sample drill so we can go find some ores and a uh, a excavator. We'll probably start with just one, owing to the fact that it costs nine blocks of steel plus another. Uh, this is probably another like three, four stacks of steel in here, maybe even more than that. Three radi oh. Got a whole bunch of plates and stuff crafting, but for now, actually, I probably don't need this. Right, this shows me junk. Yeah, let's go find the actual ore veins. So to do so, we just need the core sample drill, place it down somewhere, give it some power, uh, and I think it uses 8,000 R per operation. So if you just give it a full charge and then give it a kick, it'll do a drill. It does this little cool drilling animation. And when it's done, it spits out an item for you that tells you what it has. Hey, this vein, well, this is actually exactly what I wanted. An iron vein with 3,000, 38,000 something ores. And uh, yeah, so it looks like there's iron, nickel, and maybe tin in this vein. What you can do is then right -click, shift right click that thing on the ground and it drops it off there. So iron is the one resource I'm running out of the most right now. So uh, perfect. The fact that it's very close to our power production, very convenient. I'm going to test a couple others. Um, something else I would like to find nearby would be a copper vein. So, I mean, we're one for one so far, right? Can we be two for two? I actually wonder, does this thing keep its energy when I break it? That's what I'm about to find out. Because my capacitor only holds, you know, so much energy. All right, literally nothing here. Not two for two. Next chunk. Wait, that was this one. Next chunk does not keep its energy. All right, just a little ways away, uh, found a copper vein. So these are probably the two I need right now. We'll go looking for more probably in the future. Uh, we'll have to fill out a hole in at some point. But now let's go ahead and actually make that drill. Ugh. So much steel and iron. I built the excavator. I even got all the components listed here. It lists nine blocks of steel, so I got myself nine blocks of steel. But I don't actually know if it... Like, what's the steel do? Oh, the steel is for the excavator wheel itself. Okay. I about to say, like, there's no steel in this. Wait, so how does this work? I have to build both the excavator machine and a wheel? It's been a long time since I've made one of these. Here it is with the uh, actual digging wheel assembled, too. And now it's just a matter of what block do we click to form it? That one. So, um, I'm going to assume power goes into these things that look vaguely like power nodes. And ores will come out the back. So, an ore vein lasts for 72 Minecraft days, I'm told. Um, uh oh. Where's my power? Is this thing... That is outputting. This thing has power. Maybe this doesn't make sound. Okay, yeah, I guess it's... Sound is just broken. That's fine by me. Um, there it goes. It's just producing ores. So right now, uh, I just want iron. But the fact that I no longer have to go mining for iron, hallelujah. In the, we're probably, what, like 10, 15 minutes into this video. I think I've already spent an hour and a half mining specifically to get iron to make this thing. And um, now in like half an hour, I'll have enough iron to last me, you know, half a lifetime. So uh, yeah, th th we will eventually deplete this orbit. Oh, that's really cool. It even shows like the little graphic. Oh, is it each time the thing goes around, we get an ore? Wow, that's really cool that it's synced. Like the speed is synced to the graphic. I love this machine already. Um, I very rarely use it in other packs because by the time you've unlocked it, you've typically unlocked better uh, auto miners. The biggest problem with the excavator is that it only auto mines, you know, the vein that you build it in. Right, like here, it's only auto mining the uh, this iron vein, not that one, my iron vein sample. Um, yeah, it's only mining this vein. And if I wanted to mine something else, I have to physically up and move all you know, hundred ish blocks that comprise this thing somewhere else. And there's no capsule mod in this pack, at least as far as I know, to do it easily. So I have to like mine everything out and then place everything back down. Um, but for now, this is what we've got, and I'm not going to complain. I'm going to be very thankful, as a matter of fact. 
So, with that out of the way, next goal I think will be the arc furnace to make ore processing a little bit easier. Um, we can just directly dump ores into there. And I noticed that arc furnace recipes had their rest or their uh, RF cost reduced as well. So, well, nope, just kidding, I lied. Uh, no such thing. Maybe it was only some arc furnace recipes were cheaper. Or maybe I've gone crazy. I don't know. Maybe I saw some of these alloys. For some reason, I thought that thought that arc furnace was cheap. Maybe at this high an energy cost, we're not going to use it for much or process. I don't know. But um, we're going to need an arc furnace anyways for progression. So let's make one. First, let's make the graph or the electrodes. We can make the blueprint, and then with the blueprint, we can stamp the electrodes. I believe it's four per. Oh, we got a full durability one. We don't have to stamp them. Okay, so yeah, it's uh. Do I have enough hop graphite left now? So it's three ingots for the blueprint plus another uh, three times. You know what? Instead of doing math, let's just try it and find out. Yeah, there was nothing to worry about. So uh, that makes three electrodes. I assume these items no longer exist. Yeah, maybe we got them for free. I'm not going to complain if we got them for free. Um, tech. Oh, maybe we didn't actually craft the electrodes. Dang it. No accidental duping. Did that work? Now I actually have the electrodes. All right. Uh, sure. Next to actually make the arc furnace is another whole lot of steel but i don't have to worry about steel now i can probably also tear down our um our improved blast furnace and use these blocks in the actual uh arc furnace because i don't think we're ever going to use the improved blast furnace to make steel now that we have this uh setup out of curiosity how many do i get out of this seven huh unlucky Quick detour while steel and other stuff processes. Let's expand our farm to increase our uh, biodiesel production. Because we have to manually harvest it, it's going to have to be on the larger side because you know we're not going to come harvest it as soon as each individual plant is grown. Um, but I will have it loaded so that it grows. And uh, each harvest should give us a fair chunk of biodiesel. Going with canola because both the plant and the seed can be used to craft biodiesel. Like the seeds are for to be squeezed and the plants are to be uh fermented so all i have to do is uh well i think each piece regardless is worth the same so no uh like uh each seed squeezes into 80 plant oil each plant ferments into 80 ethanol and then it's one plus one is two 8 plus 8 is 16, same thing. So effectively, each seed or plant makes 80 millibuckets of biodiesel. And these things, when you harvest them, tend to probably average like four or five uh, seeds slash plants per click. So I think that's pretty efficient. Um, but yeah, if we check right now, our biodiesel is uh, gone. All that's left is what's in the pipes and what's in the buffer here. So... Um, this thing does use a lot of energy. That's its downside. In fact, perhaps we should set it up such that we can flip a lever to turn it off when we need to conserve energy. Now, the good news is, even if it runs out of energy, it just runs slower. Right? But slower is still fine. Uh, it'll run at, what do we have? Like Each of those produces about 75. That produces about, I think we said like 30. So it'll run at uh, one-fifth-ish speed when there's no biodiesel such as when it's like offline loaded but even running at one fifth speed by the time we come back um after an episode it'll have mine probably not the entire vein but enough of it that we can move it somewhere else here we have it one arc furnace coming right up uh give it its electrodes and should i have turned it the other way to make it easier to plug in probably right now I'll use some of these universal cables to try to float the uh, connection off the ground a bit so I don't run into the cables any more than I already do. And that should be relatively OSHA approved. I mean, it is still a live wire hanging in the factory, but you know, 
Uh, we'll live. All right. That allows us to make industrial slime. Oh boy, that's a recipe. Uh, pork, beef, salt, clay, and a slime bar. All right, so we're going to need a pig farm. Now, I did notice that uh, my sheep died. I have no clue what killed them, but they're all gone. So um, we're going to need to get new sheep as well. But I guess let's start by luring some pigs over. Here, piggy, piggy, piggy. Welcome to your new home. A crap or anything. Uh, they're stuck here forever. All right, so I could breed them like this just by giving them food, but I think there is a totemic ritual whose sole purpose is to breed animals. So let's, uh, perhaps let's sleep through the night first so I don't get a zombie in my animal pens, which is probably what killed the sheep. According to the book, that's actually what the Rite of Spring does. So we've already done this before to make red cedar saplings, but um, it says it'll force nearby animals to breed consuming food items. I don't know where it actually gets its food items from. Like, do they have to be in a nearby inventory or do they have to be dropped on the ground? I don't know. We're just going to find out, I guess. So that is loot rum. And uh, don't exactly have... Watching because I don't I don't have my dress on, so there's no reason to be jumping. It's a one bar recipe or one bar uh ritual, so don't really have to stress it too much. But um Alright, so absolutely no breeding is happening. What if I Yeah, so I guess I eat it off the ground. But uh looks like it still respects breeding cooldown, maybe? All right, is there a separate ritual to make babies grow quickly? Off the top of my head, I don't think there is. Uh, let's see. Plants will grow fast. Chickens will hatch. Not quite. Looking at uses of the industrial slime ball, I actually think I'm overcomplicating things. I need four of these total. One for, or two for a pair of slime boots. Two for a uh, slime sling. So I don't think I actually need to set up a whole pig farm in India that jazz. Come to the riverbed here, snag some salt, and everything else we should have. So what slime ball do I have the most? So probably blue ones, as they quite literally fall out of the slot, fall out of the sky. Uh we'll probably never use salt again. Alright, so what was it? Pork, beef, salt, clay. So some of our little piggies have to die. I hurt little piggy. Dropped four pieces. Oh, if you drop one more, your friend didn't have to die. This is your fault, little piggy. Kind of victim blaming to blame the dead pig for not giving you enough meat, but you know. Can't stop me. Uh, yeah, we'll store it for later. All right. So, Arc Furnace, the first thing we do with you is make slime balls. What goes in which slot? Um, I think that's the slime. Those in these, those go in those slots. All right, so we have standard durability electrodes, unfortunately. That means it will not last forever, but uh, there we go. Four industrial slime balls. And that gives us, I think purple is the hardest one to get. I don't know. But now we can make the slime sling, slime boots, and Hopefully a glider. One hang glider. Uh, not quite. We have to make the leather next. All right. Well, even just sling and boots, right? Adds a lot to our mobility. We can now just bounce around. Um, ow. I didn't actually put the boots on. I'm glad we landed on a higher elevation than we started. Otherwise, I might have accidentally died. I haven't died yet this series, by the way. Just saying. There we go. So this would help us get around. Uh, once we get the glider, we can really get around. And then that'll make, you know, ex exploration a lot easier. Uh, potion of leaping. That doesn't seem very useful. All right. So what do we need to do to make the glider? The glider comes will come as a natural consequence of our next goal anyways, which is industrial leather. So industrial leather has 
There's two ways to make it. We can mix it by hand and then jam sodium in. Or we can do it in the arc furnace. I think for now, since we might be able to make it, this is probably easier. The same materials. Um, so, treated leather, buffalo hide, imp leather, sugar, and I left the last one because that's what we don't have. This is something we have to make with roots, but everything else in here, I think we've already gathered up, right? Treated leather we can make, we just have to keep breeding our cows and whatever. Uh, buffaloes, keep breeding our buffaloes, we get four per hide, that's pretty good. Imp leather, let's go kill a few imps, I guess. In the nether is, I think that's the only place I've seen imps. Um, and gather some of their hides. Didn't find my imps, but I did find another fortress, which has no good loot. Kind of hoping there's the Ender Isle loot in here, but that's probably been disabled. Kinda sucks. Uh, Ender Isle, like the Ender, is a is pretty decent loot sword. Said we get absolutely nothing of value. I... You... A good bow, though. Ow. What is this thing? Ow! You are really scary. All right, well, you're dead now, thankfully. Uh, that was like the witch rat mob. So, I don't know. Never seen that guy before, and he uh, lit me on fire real fast. Anyways, I'm still looking for imps. Normally, ow, is this fire ever going? Am I gonna die? Excuse me, fire? How long am I gonna burn for? Okay, thank you for not burning me for too long. Anyways, as I was saying, imps are normally the only passive mob in the nether, like if you just have Natura installed, which is what most packs have. Um, so you just look for the passive mob icon on the minimap, and then you go there, you find an imp. But that doesn't seem to be the case here. There's better nether mobs that ruin that strategy. So, spotted lots of the icons, but not once has it. Please don't light me on fire. Jeez, that's a long distance shot. Uh, but yeah, no imps yet. Wow, you're actually like taking pot shots at me. Incredibly rude. Take that. Also, two thirds of the nether biomes are covered in eggplant, which makes them incredibly painful to traverse. So it's actually really hard to find an imp. Point being, I don't actually know what I'm going to do about needing. Hopefully, we don't need a lot of imp leather. There's no other way to make it other than, um, like a uh, much later game modular machine, basically a mob farm in a modular machine. Uh, so for now, I mean, I guess I just have to suffer and look for one. I've searched all over the nether here. I've uh, fought my way through tons of eggplants. How many eggplants do I have? I only have eight on me, but um, yeah, I've had to go through like huge eggplant fields. Uh, it, it really sucks, and I haven't found a single lamp. So I'm pretty sure I'm doing something wrong. Um, I suspect there's something in roots that could help with this. Uh, so what we're going to do instead is head back to the overworld and do the other root stuff that we need for this... Um, Imp leather anyways, or industrial leather, because we have to make the stalicripe, and uh, hopefully we've run into some way to make imp leather along the way. I think it's a bit late in the episode to just straight up switch mods, so um, we, get, we won't get much done in roots and it'll just be a little confusing. So why don't we... Is this not how you do it? Which block? Oh, that is how you make it. There we go. Um... Where we're gonna set work a bit on our infrastructure and set it. I'm gonna set up a couple more metal presses. Uh, right now I have one making plates. I want to have a dedicated metal press for rods. And are they allowed to be next to each other? I guess let's find out. And one for wires. Looks like the answer is no, you cannot. Warp. I guess this isn't terrible. Wait, no, I wasn't missing a block. Never mind. Almost died to an industrial uh, accident while trying to wire this up here. Um, too many uncovered wires is hanging around. Well, we're gradually making the switch over to universal cables, but I still don't quite have enough steel that I feel comfortable swapping all of our wires over to this. But, uh, dude. Hopefully before I die to it. So anyways, um, 
now that we ow oh, my boots bounce me back into it um now that we have all of this powered we can craft wires plates and uh rods in parallel for faster processing all right, next up, I think I would like to make a small change short ore processing. Right now, I've just been grabbing, you know, whatever ores I want to process and then running all the way over to the smeltery, driving them into the smeltery's input chest and then, you know, pouring them out when they're done, which happens automatically. But um, that process is kind of slow. The smeltery is not the fastest thing in the world and it doesn't scale very well. We can make it bigger, but it doesn't pour any faster. So why don't we swap over to using machines for ore processing? And for now, I think I'm just, I'm content doing ore doubling. Uh, so we will take our ore, process it through an enrichment chamber. First of all, why are you unpowered? Because you're not plugged in. Why, what happened to your wire? What? Bad wire. Don't randomly pop off for no reason. Oh, it's burning. Oh, it's because there's no limp. Wait, but I thought a single connection can't burn because. What? All right, then. Wait, but then if I maybe it is time to make the swap to, to swap everything over to universal cables, then why is it burning? Because now I feel like if I were to just plug. This into this wire set. I would burn the wire to there. Let's see if that's actually true. All right, moment of truth. No, the wire didn't burn. Uh, that's weird. But I'm not going to complain. Um, I thought what was happening was that the wire is burning because these connectors have been buffed in pack configs, but I thought maybe the wire themselves wasn't buffed. In fact, let me check that. Uh, from immersive so immersive wires normally do have uh throughput limits they've been made lossless but um you can you know run multiple in parallel to get around that but if you or they have the sorry the transfer limits are per connection um on the connectors but if you have too much energy going through a wire it'll burn the wire anyways it does have the wire burn limit for mv is 8000 rf attack um doesn't seem like but i guess the tri but the connector is the exact same amount so i don't know how one connection can burn it oh well, i'm not too worried uh we'll swap it all out soon so anyways yeah we're going to do what i started doing here we'll run our iron ore through an enrichment chamber now if we just have a basic enrichment chamber that's a single slot without any uh upgrades it's no faster however we can put um speed and energy upgrades as well as turn it into a factory version and then that'll turn ores into dusts uh we don't get any byproducts or anything nice from there but then we can run that through a furnace smelting factory to uh turn them into ore or yeah from dust to ingots there we go so i'm gonna try to make a enrichment factory what are, i don't know if that's enrichment chamber yeah enriching factory it takes two enrichment chambers you glue them together um but for the cost of two machines you get you know three slots and we can make speed and energy upgrades now i think the only thing is that they take a bunch of steel so actually i've already pinned it haven't i uh Speed upgrades are six steel per, and you need eight total to fully upgrade a machine. And likewise, energy upgrades are six steel per. But I have a fair bit of steel, he says as he grabs 15. No, really, there's, yeah, I have, I have a couple stacks of it. We should be able to make a, a set, at least, of speed and energy upgrades. It looks like enrichers and smelters take the same base time per operation, but this is a doubling mechanic, right? So for each enricher, you need two smelters of equal tier, um, which means we're actually going to need a total of 24 uh, upgrades of each type, and that's going to take a little bit to make. So while that all does some crafting, I think I want to speed up our farm here a little bit. It's occurred to me that we do have actually one growth boost mechanic available to us. Now, it's a temporary boost, and it's one that we have to actively turn on. However, remember, when we looked last looked at the Akashic Tome, the, the Rite of Spring? No. Uh, 
this one, the skill waltz, will grow nearby crops. For a short while, nearby plants will grow much faster than usual. I recall using this in uh, Subtech, and it's extremely strong. So it's wind chime flute, two notes. Let's set up a totem pole here so that we can um, do that ritual. And I'll probably just yoink one of these chimes. Let's see how big its radius is as well, if I have to put it like in the middle of the farm, or if we can put it off on the side edge like this. Alright, so what was it again? Wind chime flute. Chime flute. And I want to see, can we do the ritual without having to bring grunts over or anything? Because it's only a two. That's no point dancing again, don't have the dress on. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, as memory serves, its growth effect is quite strong, and uh, we're probably actually going to be limited by our harvesting ability during the duration. So leaving it here is probably fine, because we'll be constantly harvesting. Cool. Um, and then once this is done, unfortunately there's no auto-harvest ritual to go along with it, so the harvesting step will be manual. Um, but then we can, you know, load up one huge batch of canola for the uh, biodiesel maker and not have to worry about it for some time. Automation soon. Conveniently enough, the quest gives us another stack of upgrades for each staff we make. So uh, I made enough to upgrade our ore processing. Now, it's important that you use both speed and energy upgrades. If you just use speed upgrades, the power consumption goes way up and we can't sustain that. But if you use speed and energy upgrades, the power consumption does go up, but the energy per operation stays the same. Well, not when it's not running. Um, it's entirely feasible and probably true that I actually don't need to fully upgrade these. Like the, the value of having it fully upgraded versus maybe halfway upgraded is not that high. But I think the other machine I'm going to put upgrades into is the metallurgy confuser here. This is one of the ones that... Uh, I find myself waiting on quite a bit. Now, in theory, we can share upgrades between machines. Like, we can pull them out and then put them in the new machine when we need it in a different machine. But um, I don't think it's really worth the trouble. I'd rather just make more upgrades. Especially now that we're at the point where we do actually have a comfortable amount of upgrades. Uh, although I did temporarily turn this thing off. So, um, on that note, I think we're at a decent wrapping up point for the day. I'll definitely want to leave this on. Now, it'll run much slower uh, while we're offline, right? Because it won't ha there won't be much diesel energy once it's through the buffer. But um, it'll still provide us with... Effectively, we'll come back to a full chest worth of output. Um, I can swap this for a drawer. It probably doesn't matter. By the time this chest is full, uh, do I really care? What I'm going to do is actually offer it a little bit of stuff in here before we log off so we'll get a whole new diamond chest worth of materials um but yeah that's it for today uh i think there's going to be a small change in schedule going forward i'm having a hard time finding enough time to actually record a video of this um every day i think it, this video today took like over four hours of gameplay uh because of mining time waiting time so on and so forth and um I don't really want to compromise video quality to get one video a day out, which means the only other thing that has to, well, it's either uh, I stop, you know, I just like find more time in my day, which unfortunately I can't do, compromise on video quality or compromise on quantity. And given those choices, I think quantity is the one that's going to give at this moment. Um, so there probably won't be daily videos. Uh, I don't want to like... It's tough to say in advance how long any given video is going to take to record. So um, sometimes there might be daily videos, but sometimes there might be a day off in between. Uh, but I think given the options, that's the best I can do for now. Um, as we get later in the pack and we have more automation, you know, as we get less wait time, uh, I suspect we'll get the, the return of daily videos will happen at some point. But um, yeah, for now, I just I, I don't have the time to uh, record it you know, put together a video every day. So, uh, point is, yeah, there might not be a video tomorrow, but there should be no more than one day off between videos, at least for a little while, and I'm very sorry for that. So, um, that's it for this one. I hope to see you, I would say tomorrow, but in the next video, whenever that is, take care and bye-bye.